Perfect. We're in. Right, episode number 14. Now, there's a very uh, famous saying that usually does the rounds on social media sometimes, which reads, uh, those who stand for nothing fall for anything. Uh, my guest today has done quite the opposite this year and stood for something that she believes in uh, wholeheartedly. And that thing being the protection of women's sport and what year it's been for her, to be fair. Um, written in the Daily Mail, also it appeared on Piers Morgan Uncensored as well. And a bid to increase the awareness of the impacts of um, transgender athletes competing in the women's category. Um, now, she's pretty well qualified to be the voice of this battle as well. In 2018, she was the outdoor British shot put champion, uh, 2020 indoor champion. She's also a Commonwealth European a World Championship finalist uh, in the women's shot put. And she's also gained the title of wifey over the last couple of weeks as well. So Amelia Strickler is in the building today. Amelia, how are you doing? You all right? I'm good, thanks. Yeah. Good. Good, good, what good. introduction. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I, do you know what? I was going to try and practice it word for word and look at the camera, but I can't because I need the words there before I start stuttering <laughs> over myself. So, no, welcome. Um, how does being fiancé feel? What a nice um, lock. No, End to your yeah. kind of year, nearly. Yeah, um, I mean, this year wasn't spectacular, but <laughs> it was It was nice to nice yeah. to have that. <laughs> yeah how, how how are you how how are you i'm i'm just yeah i'm good you know just uh you know getting ready for the wedding and yeah. you know prepping for next year all eyes on paris yeah. so yeah yeah you know the fun winter training dredge but you know yeah love it love it it's the worst bit of the year yeah worst bit of the year, isn't <laughs> just it? waking up year. you know so obviously we've, we've been chatting off mic before we've jumped in so you and this feels like this has been the quickest wedding turnaround in human history for me personally just with some of my friends that have got married this year it feels yeah. like the planning had gone on for months yeah and you're in 12 days yeah and the proposal was a month and a half ago, month and a half ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah how did you how did steven set it up did you smash out the park or yeah he did yeah go on fair. give us details um, go on go on so we were in sicily um on holiday yeah. and we drove to the turkish steps which is like this really white like um Oh, like cliffs almost, almost like the, the the Sicilian cliffs of Dover, but they're a bit more intricate. They're not just, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. straight down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, we were on the beach and on the rocks and he just, yeah, he got down and popped the question. Yeah, it was really yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, very romantic. And then, yeah, we just a uh, quick turnaround. We were like, all right, cool. Let's just do Good, it. <laughs> Life of an athlete and everything else. Yeah. yeah Stephen yeah. is with us today, by the way. Smashed out of the park. So well done, sir. Well played. Well played. <laughs> Um, yeah, Amelia, like what, what a year you've kind of had um, with things that I guess outside of the sport, even though it's related to it. Um, and I just wonder in terms of, you know, you being that voice and having to be the voice rather than maybe the, I guess, certain governing bodies that I, from, from my perspective, I'm not me putting words in your mouth, from my perspective, but maybe should have done the work and the comments for you. Oh, yeah. And the reason why I say that is because, again, any statements made or decisions made, it's almost they can not hide, but they can use the term of British athletics or IAAF have this stance on it. Off we go. Yeah. Whereas for yourself, it's been no Amelia Strickler has said this. Yeah. You don't have that maybe protection of that and everyone could just fire. Yeah. Things yeah, exactly. At you. Yeah. How, how yeah. has that been? Um, I definitely think at first it was really, really stressful. Yeah. Like, you know, I the original interview I did, I did not expect the outcome. Mm. Like I really was like, oh my God, what have I done? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like I was just, you know, me and I just, you know, told the truth and I just, you know, I didn't think anything of it really. And then mm. a few days later it was like, oh my gosh, my phone <laughs> is going to explode. Um, mm. They've asked me to be on Pierce Morgan. Um, you know, obviously you're going to get pushed back. Um, but to be fair, I had a lot of support as well. It was like almost overwhelming mm. support. Um, you know, 99% of the comments and feedback and, you know, anything on socials was mostly support, which was amazing. But mm. like you say, it is a bit nerve wracking putting yourself out there on the mm. line when, you know, it could cost you sponsorships and, mm. you know, things like that. So it was definitely a weird time for me, mm. <laughs> um, especially, especially in an event like the throws, you know, I'm, I'm not a big name. I'm not, you know, you're Dina, you're KJT. Mm. Um, so to kind of like have this, you know, 15 minutes of fame thrust mm. upon me was bizarre, to be honest. Yeah, um, no, I bet. I think for, for us to, for people that don't know you, because again, obviously from just me being track and field, I obviously know you very well and followed, you know, yourself just from your own career anyway, but more so with what's happened this year. But 
I wonder if we maybe set the scene before going into more detail of, you know, the conversations you've had and why you've done it. When Where does track and field begin for you? Oh, I was very, very young. Yeah. Um, maybe 12, honestly. And it was just one of those things all of a sudden I wanted to, like, try everything in sport. So, like, I did everything, like volleyball, basketball, track and field, swimming, horseback riding, like, you name it, I've done it. <laughs> um and yeah I don't know you know the first day of the I will re- always remember the first like week of like athletics for me in track and field um you know I just tried everything mm. you know you just you do you just they make you try everything to see what you're good at and I was I was just good at the shot mm. like that's all there is to it like there was nothing you know mm. I didn't fall in love with it for any other reason than I was like oh I'm pretty good at this. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like that's, you know what I mean? It's nice to be good at something mm-hmm. sometimes, isn't it? Especially when you're a kid. Yeah. Um, and so I just, I fell into it honestly and just rolled with it and, um, you know, had a lot of success at a young age in my like local area where I grew up mm. in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't lose a meet for years and years and years, which was amazing. amazing. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? As a kid, that's yeah, yeah. Huge. like, you know, such a confidence boost for me mm. um, as a kid. And yeah, I just, you know, eventually was like, oh, I want to stick with this mm. and I want to do this in college. And I did and, you know, had a lot of success in the NCA. Maybe not as I should, not as much as I should have, but, mm. um, you know, it was, it was, NCA was fun for mm. sure. And I, I definitely learned a lot. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I was like, oh, I guess I'm good enough to maybe do this for for country. Yeah. So yeah, that happened. Yeah. Let, let's have a chat about that because obviously I think people hearing this uh, maybe uh, you know don't know you as well on the audio or the visual. Obviously the accent isn't British. Yeah. 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 So in terms of the wet wet grown up was Ohio. Yeah. So I yeah. grew up in Ohio. Um, my mom and her side of the family are all from the UK, okay. and I grew up visiting quite often because. Mm. Her, like my granny, my aunt, my two cousins all, you know, have lived in the UK. And then, uh, so grew up visiting all the time and, you know, loved mm. it. And then I finished uni and my sister finished high school. My mom's sister really wanted to move back. And I was like, okay, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, fine. <laughs> don't leave me. <laughs> um, more like that. That's actually what happened. I was like, don't yeah. leave me. Okay. <laughs> Please. Um, so, yeah, live, uh, you know, lived in Utoxeter. Mm. Um, when I first got here, lived <laughs> lived back with mom, back with mom. Um, yeah, and just traveled to Loughborough all like all yeah, the yeah. time to train, and you know made it work, and then eventually just sucked it up, moved to Loughborough. So yeah, yeah, yeah now training there all the time, and yeah, yeah working Amazing. hard. Could we have a chat about the like the collegiate system in the US? Yeah, because I know again we've sort of spoke about this off mic, but we were talking about kind of sport documentaries and stuff, and for me watching things like Last Chance You and the the, just the level of like finance that goes into that it's like they're playing in the nfl already and again you know when we watch the the kind of the collegiate uh, system for you know with the us and stuff as well it's like a diamond league here yeah like for uni yeah yeah that's honestly the vibe yeah and do do you find that that's helped at all with then coming into just like elite sport as a senior now because that kind of environment has just been that while you were through college and school or yeah yeah i mean i definitely would i think i think i learned a lot about being in 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 the ncaa like i you know you go to these big meets and they're like really cool and really fun and then you know you go to first nationals and you know my first national definitely didn't have a great experience Um, my coaches were really inexperienced as well and i Mm. think that definitely rubbed off on me Mm. um but i think like looking back at it i was like yeah do you know what that was it was a great environment to be around Mm. you know that that level at at that age um because you don't really get that in the uk if i'm honest yeah yeah um so i'm definitely definitely glad i did that in terms of that experience and um yeah those national meets you yeah. know <laughs> they're up there yeah the no, they are people are running world world leads yeah <laughs> you know which is ridiculous for throwing like world it. leads jumping yeah. you know all of that like it's it is mad yeah, um, and just being around kind of like greatness and competition like yeah. that all the time. Yeah, and the environment too. Like, you know, those meets are sold out. Mm. Like, fans come. <laughs> like, no matter where they are. Like, yeah. they're they're busy. Um, Yeah, it's a great, great, great feeling to be to be in that environment for yeah. sure. When you compare, because you've got the experience of it, what, what, what do they do like in the American system, I guess, for like sport in general differently to what 
we have here like what what would you say would be maybe if, if the word, right word is like missing that we're not doing so i mean obviously there's a lot of money in it mm. but i don't think that's what necessarily makes it makes it great i think it's more like the people involved mm. want you to be successful mm. like it seems like the coaches want you to be successful it seems like you know the trainers that you're working the athletic trainers that are like taping your ankles every day or whatever you know they want you to be successful mm. um and like the officials as well i think mm. is a massive part for athletics specifically mm. um because in the u.s they just you can just tell they like they love it yeah like they they literally love it mm. um that's why like i go to the u.s to compete sometimes mm. in like april time because there's some really good meets and the mm. officials are just like they love it they like yeah. like love to see your personality shine you know they get into it you yeah. know um whereas you don't always get that in the uk you yeah. just don't like yeah. and it's it's a shame really but you just don't and i think that is a massive part of what makes yeah. it like what it is yeah do you, re do you reckon that's just us as people though the uk because again i i, I with the with American teams in general, like you're so enthusiastic. Just people that you, the American people are so enthusiastic. <laughs> I get that all the time, and you it know? just bleeds into just everything you will do. Again, like the the NCAA's and you know, the the meets with colleges and stuff like that. It is like it's like our meets for school, but on drugs. Like, like yeah. in, I mean, like steroids in terms of it, it's just massive. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, and we wouldn't see that kind of production in the UK. I don't think unless it is like national meet diamond leagues and stuff. But when you go into schools, it's like it's dead like the, the, the know, competition is so yeah, bad it's like so sad sometimes <laughs> yeah. um but yeah no i definitely think we need you know a boost of that enthusiasm and that just joy of like what they're doing mm. um and you know maybe it's because they're not getting paid mm. you know yeah. here in the uk i think that's also a big part of why we have like a bit of an official issue in the yeah. uk but um you know i definitely think um yeah i just definitely think we we need some of that mm. we do to to make you know even the lower level meets like you yeah. said let's make them great yeah so you know let kids succeed at a younger age you mm. know because i i've been out for like a really long time so this season just gone is like the first time that i've been back like i guess from a like having a bit of a full winter yeah having a whole season and the the like the british league matches and the southern men's league or the southern leagues now is because we're mixed we're all mixed together now but there's not a lot of people there now compared to when I was younger as a junior, like between 2012 and 14. Yeah. It was packed all the time. Mm -hmm. And now that you can just feel like there's just not as many people anymore, which is a shame really considering though that 2012 legacy that we went to have and I had know, some yeah. phenomenal performances in. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's gone very quiet, unfortunately. Yeah. I feel. No, I, I would agree with you. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame really. I think the leagues is like as someone that didn't really have those in the u.s mm. um because the reason i was allowed to play sport when i when i started was because i went to catholic school okay the catholic schools actually had their own sports leagues mm. so they would play each other mm. like in the in the, the diocese or whatever mm. they do call it um i'm not religious anymore so yeah, i yeah. couldn't really <laughs> um but yeah it's definitely one of those things like that was such an opportunity for me but mm. like if i didn't go to that school I don't think I would have started playing sports that young. Okay. Whereas like here in the UK, those leagues, you can start at what, like eight or something? Yeah, like yeah, it's you mad. You can start like so yeah, young. Right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so that I think that's such a like a treat in terms of mm. like that opportunity being there for young kids. Mm. But again, like you say, if they're not if they're falling a bit flat in terms of like turnout, officials, performances, you know, mm. um, again, is that gonna keep people in the sport? Mm. So yeah, yeah, it's one of them. Okay. With, with you so let's say we're kind of in college area now you've moved over to the uk what is it like to be kind of amelia away from the shot put circle <laughs> with, with being amelia the athlete like, like when you leave your front door i guess day to day because i can imagine there's obviously you as the athlete for sure but yeah. then there's that also that person that you know when you're at home when you're steven when you're seeing family just you away from all of that what's it like kind of navigating between the two people um, I definitely think it's a bit of a balancing act. I think sometimes I definitely have to, you know, switch on and off a bit. Mm. Um, and I think sometimes that's harder than, than others. Um, but I definitely think it, I'm getting better at it the older I get. 
Um, and I, you know, I like to be fun. I like to, you know, make jokes and stuff. But at training, you won't catch me making many jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll cuss you out, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. But, like, it's just one of those yeah. things, like, um, you just have to, you know, be switched on, be focused. It's mm. a very technical sport. I don't think people quite realize <laughs> sometimes. And, yeah, yeah, I just think it's 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 getting better as I get older, for sure. Okay. What, what have you have you faced any kind of challenges maybe on the junior side of things because again becoming so great at a sport within that age group there's like that level of remembering that you are just a kid as well if that makes sense sometimes yeah. and then there's almost that responsibility and an expectation forced and thrusted upon you as a kid yeah because you're starting to perform exceptionally well looking at potential of being you know in the world competing at the olympics yeah How how's that journey been up to like you being the age you are now and then coming through there for, as, a, as a young athlete? Um, I think I was definitely really hard on myself. I think every mm. performance that wasn't a PB was like the end of the world. Mm. And obviously that's just, looking back, you're like, well, that's silly because you can't do that every time. Yeah. Um, the older you get, it seems like it's harder to get PBs, doesn't it? Um, so I definitely think like that, I, that was definitely something I look back and I'm like, oh, I was so hard on myself. Mm. Um, and I think you learn to have that grace with yourself too, the, like the older you get. Um, but I guess, again, there's a fine line between, you know, like grace and like understanding that you can't have that amazing performance every time. And I need to push for more. I need to push for success. Mm. So, you know, walking fine lines in sport <laughs> always. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, I got to uni. Um, and I definitely, so I transitioned from glide to rotational shot yeah. when I got to uni. Um, so I was 18 and that was just like such a challenge mm. and it's like almost a disappointment at first because I was so bad at it at first, mm. you know, I was told that, you know, this is, this is the way forward and mm. it's, you know, trying to convince yourself to believe that sometimes mm. <laughs> when it doesn't seem like it's going as you'd want it to. So um yeah that was definitely really hard i'd say nine months it took me to really, really? like to like have more confidence with it have more mm. like to see it results as well like i just i couldn't connect with it at all mm. and then you know as a freshman i was like the only freshman to qualify for like the first round of nationals that year okay. like there was a lot of other seniors that were doing it but i was the only freshman and i was like okay cool like this is getting me somewhere mm. like this is getting better um, and then, yeah, I just, at one point I just, I had some really bad coaches in the NCA as well. Mm. I think, I think the NCA is good in some respects, but in like the coaches can just move freely. Right. But, okay. uh, but at that time you're pretty much tied down to your university. Like it's really hard to get out of it. Mm. Um, you have to like be released and. They can basically like hold you hostage. If you <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. I say that, but like, yeah, they actually can. Yeah. They can not release you and then you can't compete for a year mm. and you like, you lose a year of eligibility. Like it's mad. Yeah. It's yeah. Um, and that year, I think because I was like so mad at my coaches, mm. that was a big part of my success. And I think as well, that also made me think I needed to be like mad all the time to have success. Okay. Which in an event like the shot put does make sense. But at the same time, I think getting older, I've learned from that that you don't necessarily need that, okay. which is always, which is always nice. Do you still draw upon it though on the odd occasion? Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, it got to be done. Um, yeah, it's like a certain intensity level almost, you mm. know, it's my coach and I talk about a lot, like, you know, the shot, is a very different throwing event from the others. It mm. just is. Like the other ones tend to be about being long and like having these levers and just like, I don't know how else to describe it other than long. Whereas the mm. shots just like, for me as someone who's not very tall, mm. it's more about speed, power, you know, aggression, channeling that correctly mm. and lining up a throw. Mm. And I think that goes for even like someone like Krauser, you know, his is the longer throw, but it's still got to have that, you know, aggression behind it. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's like a big, a big thing I've learned over the years, too. You know, it's just about that. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, uni. Oh, and then, yeah, now. So hmm, what was the question? 
<laughs> what was the question? It's yeah, gone. It's gone. I've lost it. Yeah. No, it's fine because anyway, I did have a. It will come back to me, you know. We'll come back to it. I, I know that was it. It was more kind of navigating how you, as the individual, have as as Amelia away from yeah. track and field yeah. and throwing, kind of navigates this growth of the athlete yeah, herself, yeah, and then yeah. not kind of how we're separating these into, into yeah that. yeah i just i definitely think you know through the experiences i've had like i think and then you know that experience of being angry at uni mm. has definitely like stayed with me for a while but as i've gotten older mm. i've realized you don't need that to throw far it's just the shot is about mm. you do have to bring that intensity sometimes and you see it a lot more in shot putters yeah. than you do in any other event like mm. You know, the hammer guys don't tend to walk in the ring shouting and stuff. Or the discus <laughs> guys, they just don't. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like the javelin throwers sometimes yeah, get yeah. a bit, yeah, yeah. bit frisky. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but uh, no, it's mostly the shot putters, you know. Yeah. Um, we love a good yell, we do. So, yeah. yeah. What informs the change from going to glides to the rotational circle? Because, again, that's like that's a huge, like, as you say, yeah. nine months out of practicing a new way of doing your skill is from an athlete perspective is a killer right that's a year yeah. of your career kind of gone and as we know sport doesn't last forever for people yeah what informed the change with that um the coach at my university was like you're doing it that's it okay it's the way forward you're okay. too sh you're too short to be a glider anymore let's go okay and i mean it definitely paid off um for me anyway i went from about i don't know 12 13 meters to almost 15 in the first year so yeah. like it was definitely a big jump and then it got me to you know the first round of nationals um but yeah it was frustrating i'll tell you that it's really mm -hmm. frustrating no, i bet i bet okay and yeah in terms of then if we if we bring this to kind of this year now with that that kind of journey of that you know again and I, I, the reason why i want to emphasize that is because it's so easy to just i think you know sometimes see yourself as an athlete and people might perceive that as well she's really good at this one thing how dare she in some respect maybe communicate her some of the challenges that you had with you know particularly with, around the transgender side of things in sport and you know it's almost as if you can't have a voice sometimes yeah. because you're at that level so you're better than probably 99.9% .9 .9 of women in the world because of being achieving this kind of sense that you do in sport and competing to the level you do and I, I, how has it been in terms of that with the year and almost having to find yourself as a sportswoman who just wants to enjoy her sport, finding herself maybe getting slightly wrapped up in like the culture wars that we've been experiencing <laughs> yeah. for that's a no great good three, four yeah. years at the minute. Uh, culture wars is definitely the word for it. I feel like, um, you know, it's been, it's been, it's been interesting. It's been hard. Mm. Um, I don't think people realize how hard it is to like have your phone just like constantly going like that. Like mm. I, I just yeah I didn't I'm not used to that <laughs> mm. um you know all like I mean it's been really nice in terms of I feel like I've got a lot of backing from it mm. a lot of people supporting what I you know what I stand for you know mm. I do want women's sport to just be kept for biological females like mm -hmm. it's literally nothing personal it's not it's not to be mean nasty and ugly it really isn't mm. it's just just for the fairness element of it mm. and I definitely think some people just didn't didn't want to understand that they didn't want to listen they didn't want to they didn't want to believe it you know mm -hmm. um and they want to you know take it as a personal attack mm. and then retaliate with personal attacks mm. um so I think that's where things get you know a bit mean nasty and ugly and it's not really nice you know to have someone's like entire twitter feed just be <laughs> slagging you off <laughs> um li like like quite literally um mm. <laughs> it's yeah um but i think it's just been hard to like almost mentally be fully there in mm. in my event and i think mm. that wasn't really fun for me mm. in in that just that respect like i definitely don't regret doing it and i mm. definitely you know stood up for what i believed in mm. but i think that was the hardest part yeah. was like separating the two entities mm. like i'm at training now we're not gonna mm. we're not gonna think about it we need to just switch that off mm. i think that was the hardest bit for the yeah for for that you know moment in time okay yeah. so 
for the record, just so we've got it <laughs> clocked in so everyone can understand. I have two questions for Amelia that I've told her about already that I just want her to answer yes or no to. So we're all on the same page before we go any further. So the first one, do you have a problem with an individual being transgender? No, absolutely you, not. And do you believe that transgender people should be banned from participating in sport as a whole? No, no. Thank you. So let's ask the million dollar question. What is the actual difficult, not difficulty, the thing that is not fair on women's sport from a transgender person engaging against women? Like it's just strictly biology. Like it's strictly biology. Yeah. Um, and I just think, you know, there are too many biological males out there that just think it's okay to take, you know, women's, you know, places, prize money, mm. whatever in sport. And I think that's frustrating mm. um, as well because you know we've had two categories for forever mm -hmm. you know <laughs> in sports mm -hmm. for well as long as women were allowed in anyway mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's another topic for yeah, another yeah, day yeah. we'll do that one another time maybe <laughs> yeah, let's, let's yeah, do that yeah. for the end of next season um, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah like you know they've been separated forever mm -hmm. you know they're separate for a reason mm -hmm. um you know it's strictly biology it's strictly mm -hmm. the you know the advantages that males have yeah. you know I, I, you know, I'm really strong. I, I know I am. Yeah. But the equivalent, you know, male is like warming up with my PB. Like, yeah. it's just, <laughs> it's just how things are yeah, in like yeah. the throwing world. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's strictly biology. It's strictly for fairness. Mm. Yeah. And I've, I've been thinking about it myself because again, when we were have, thinking about how we're going to do this and navigate this conversation with you, I, I again looked at my own performances this year, having been away from the sport for about six years. I haven't competed for, haven't trained in that time either. Um, and I've not run a time that set the world to light at all. Um, and I'm humble enough to admit that. But my, the, I think the fastest 100 time I ran this year was like an 11.4, which stuck me in the top 10 of the girls. And I've been away for six years. Yeah. And again, I've not gone through any transition. You know, I've not yeah. gone through any medication to reduce my testosterone or anything like that. I've just been pretty sedentary for six years. Yeah. And I've turned <laughs> back up and my time would put me in that, that range. Yeah. Which, I, I, and the reason why I wanted to give that example is to, just to show even someone such as myself who's been sedentary for all that time could just walk in and be like, yeah, great. Yeah, Fantastic. like you could Cheers. probably make the British Champs final. Yeah. Like, let's be honest. Yeah. Like, that's just yeah. how, it, how it is. Um, there's just a big, big difference. And I, I don't think people quite understand as well that, you know, the medication mm. isn't going to even, you know, transitioning, you know, mm. isn't going to take away all those advantages because mm. there's certain things that men are physiologically born mm. with mm -hmm. that you can't change like mm. lung size heart size hip angles you know you, the list could just go on like mm. i'm not going to sit here and lecture yeah, people yeah. um but it's just it's just those things that i don't think people fully account for mm -hmm. um or like fully understand and i think that's where there's a lot of hate you know got thrown at me for it mm. You know, want to call me transphobic, whatever. Mm. Um, like it's literally nothing to do with yeah, yeah, with your yeah. choices as a personal individual. Yeah, yeah, like I, yeah. I literally don't care. You live your life. I'm mm. gonna live mine. I mean, I throw a metal ball for a job. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. cannot judge you. Like, I yeah. just uh, this is this is what I love. So yeah, yeah. Um, it's just one of those things. Like, I just like it's just for fairness, and that's like mm. the only reason I even did the initial interview to yeah. begin with, and I yeah. didn't expect anything of it, and then it just like spiraled. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I, I get it. And again, for from my perspective, just in in terms of the the, the trans side of things, is I under I I got I understand the cognitive distance of it, or I felt a sense of cognitive distance as well because of the fact that they felt like that they can't compete or engage in sport. And again, that goes to going back to what I mentioned to you earlier in terms of you having to be Amelia, the individual, to start and open this conversation because it shouldn't be down to you to have to start it and then maybe down the line we start to look at a potential category for them and things like that yeah like yeah. this is things that we can do you know we've got a male and a female one anyway yeah. fine all right the competition might not be great but it needs to start somewhere yeah yeah but on the flip side it can't just be everyone jumps in straight away yeah. to the categories that have been there for hundred, well, you know several hundred years now basically if yeah. we look at it from when yeah. we've started records with sport so I, I i completely understand how maybe you know again the trans athletes do not feel represented but 
also there's a part of me that's like, but you could actually build something quite amazing here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and I'm not yeah. calling not to call them lazy or anything like that. That they're not thinking in around that, yeah. but we can't just go straight into the women's sport. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It, yeah, exactly. It's, it would be fine if they jumped in with us because, or you know, if yeah. a trans, if a female transitioned into a trans a transgender male, it's not going to impact us as male no, sportsmen. No, it's just. But, but that's. It, I think that's again, like people don't really take that into consideration either. Mm. They don't really take into consideration like the opposite, mm. like. I would not be successful in the men's shot mm. by far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could even take all the testosterone in the world, which would be <laughs> doping. <laughs> and I would still be awful. Yeah, like yeah. that's just, that's just a fact. Like, do you know, if I was born a guy, maybe I'd be taller. Do you know, mm. like yeah. do you, there's so many factors that I just yeah. think people don't really consider. Yeah. Um, And you just, you don't see success in yeah. the reverse. Yeah. And that's why it just seems like such, you know, so, it just seems like such an issue for the, just the women's sport. Mm. And that's where, I, yeah. you know that's where i obviously see an issue with it is yeah. just you know we, we deserve our own sport we yeah. deserve we deserve that we yeah. do and we've had to fight for it for so long as well you know what i mean and we're even still not in a level playing field i still go mm. to comps mm. and i don't get the same prize money as the guys mm. even if i win i don't I, you know what i mean like it's sometimes that's just just how things are mm. so yeah can I, can I read you just on this point? Because I think you've brought in this quite nice. I, I, I got uh, the snippet from the Daily Mail column you did in April. I was going to read it out because I think it, it summarises so well. And um, it was quite a powerful thing that you wrote, actually, in terms of the graft of a professional athlete, but more so in and around this situation with the female side of stuff as well. So um, the TikTok influencer, who I'm not going to name, <laughs> uh, is a biological male who first openly identified as transgender in March last year has been signed by one of the world's biggest sports company, and I'm also not going to name them, but it's the opposite to Adidas, uh, to promote women's clothing. Now, you put here, I'm a GB shot putter who has won the British title twice and competed in the Commonwealth Games. I'm a European finalist and a world championship finalist. I know how many years of training it takes, often at a great personal cost, to reach the top levels of sport. I don't know what it means to be a woman. I've been a shot putter since I was 10, Life in professional athletics requires grit, determination, and it doesn't involve dancing around grinning inanely. It means getting up at the crack of dawn to train, keeping going when every muscle in your body is screaming at you to stop, and forgoing time with family and friends, um, and being utterly single-minded. Hearing that back today, now that kind of the dust has settled on this year, how does that kind of sound hearing that back and remembering that obviously the ti that time in your life? writing this um i mean i definitely meant what i said and i definitely you know 100 percent honesty mm. like you know that's it you know it just it did suck in that mm. moment to you know see someone who you know is just just almost seems to be you know a personality for social media mm. get you know a contract with one of the major sports companies in the world um when you know I've been consistently one of the top shot putters in the world and I, I can't get a kit deal to save my life. Mm. You know, <laughs> like I just can't. It's just, it's it's the event I do, you know, it's athletics. There's no money in athletics anymore yeah, yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, unless you're the top dog in the hundred. Mm. Um, yeah, it just, it, you know, it, it definitely still, still sucks remembering, you know, that and, you know, you, you still see it today. Mm. Um, but yeah. I just, yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah. Has has the dust settled on this? And I, I guess there's probably a two-part question. Mm -hmm. One for you, but also then just in general and any concerns that this might be a conversation that has to come up at a later date, do you think? I mean, I think in terms of athletics, I'm really happy that they've put their foot down, World mm. Athletics, and said, we're just not going to do it. Mm. I think, you know, I think a lot of people have actually thanked me for it and I have no idea if world athletics cared what i said yeah. cared what i did you know <laughs> i have no idea because no one ever contacted me and people mm -hmm. still to this day ask me did they ever ask you and i was like no i i heard nothing from them um but i am grateful that they did you know even if even if they you know didn't care what i thought mm -hmm. i'm glad they did the right thing um but i think definitely like you say i have a feeling this is going to come up again and it's definitely not not solved in like other sports as well mm. um you know you're still seeing it in powerlifting weightlifting 
you know, all those are both, you know, sports where male advantage is definitely going to reign, you know, range. It's going to be supreme. And oh, yeah. So I definitely feel like it will come up again in the future. Um, But for now, yeah, I am kind of glad the dust has settled a bit. Mm. Um, just so I can really try and focus on this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and no, I know we we spoke about that, didn't we? Like off mic before we started in terms because I got in contact with you at Easter this year, and it was one of those where I think that I I'm pretty sure I messaged you after the Piers one, and then when did you have Tucker Carlson? Um, was I that... think that was before the second Pierce one. Okay, so that would have been what would that have been? Oh. I think you messaged me after like everything pretty oh, much. Oh, okay, like, okay, it had, fine. It had like calmed down a lot. Yeah, yeah. okay, no, that and, and that was, I was kind of, because I was just like, you know, that it needs to get to a point now. And again, I know we're talking about it today, but moving forward is that it needs, you know, you need to get on and compete yeah, yeah. and, you know, forget about this. But have you, has there been consequences to your decision to talk about this? Like, I mean, not that I necessarily know of okay i guess um you know i had no kit deal no no sponsor to be loyal to necessarily Mm -hmm. um and i i think i think the one thing i'd say is i almost felt guilty that i'd put like my club in a disposition Mm -hmm. about it because obviously Mm -hmm. they still have to i think be inclusive Mm -hmm. um whether it's right or not I don't actually know if they, because World Athletics changed the rules, I don't know if the club level still has to be inclusive of biological males in the women's events. Okay. Um, so I feel like I almost felt guilty towards them because mm. I didn't want to, like, you know, put them on the spot in terms of, like, supporting me mm. um, as their athlete because <laughs> um, I do a lot of meets for my club. Mm. Um, but I know. Um I have a private sponsor who is very, very supportive of it. Mm. He was like, no, like, that was great that you did that. Um, so, I mean, maybe it's maybe it's cost me sponsors in the long term, but mm. I don't necessarily regret it. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'd definitely do it again. You know, I'm, yeah. I meant what I said. Um, and, you know, I'm glad, you know, even if I was some like 1% towards the change, you mm. know, mm. of the rules, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad for that. Yeah. Okay, it's it's interesting what you're saying in terms of that the the club level side of stuff, but I think it still goes back to what we discussed earlier. What I mentioned earlier is that you know I understand they're put in a difficult position, but it's almost as if their athlete all should also shouldn't be put in the position of having to yeah. discuss this. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. and it's the I, I what I would hate for this conversation as well today to be seen by a, a junior athlete as well who's experiencing any form of like, you know, gender dysmorphia or anything like that, who feels like th- we're anti them because it's yeah, not the case no, at all. No, it's not. It's just asking for consistency and transparency in how they're going to compete. Yeah, exactly. Because it's not going to be viable within the women's sport. Yeah, yeah. And like you say, you know, this could be like the start of like something new for them. Mm. But I just feel like we haven't got to that point yet either. Mm. You know, yeah, like yeah, it yeah. just feels like a bit of a stalemate now. We're just like, well, it's not like they're not trying to be inclusive. It's mm. just like, how do we include them the right way? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's a hard one. Because we want them there. And yeah, again, like the, it, we want people in sport. Yeah, like yeah. literally, we're athletics. We're like, please, please. stay in yeah. sport. Please, we need <laughs> everyone we yeah, can yeah. get because everyone's just quitting left, right, and center. Um, but no, like we we like it's not about not wanting people to be in sport. It's just about finding the right way to include people, mm. you know, with with fairness. Mm. Yeah. Could I ask as well, because you, you mentioned in terms of Piers Morgan on the Piers Morgan interview that you had a lot of people come back to you and say thank you. And yeah, let, we're not going to name them because I can appreciate, as you <laughs> said, it's certain individuals that if it did get out, they might lose out in some way, shape or form, which, again, is not what we want no, as a yeah, whole yeah. at all. But I, w- I want it. And please don't feel like anyone listening to this that was one of those people that thanked Amelia I'm not getting at you at all I promise because again I can appreciate bills need paying and everything else but what I did want to ask is have you been surprised with like the lack of support from maybe female commentators and who are very pro women things like that I don't want to use the word feminist but you know they probably would come with the the feminist tendencies but a lot of because that was something that I was looking around for as well when coming into this interview with you it's like right who else was also saying all of this and it was like complete radio silence yeah which i i 
completely whole humbly understand with like the way council culture is set up and everything else. I do get it. But using you as a perfect example that just threw that to the wind and thought, no, I need to say something. Yeah. Whereas there might have been people that were better situated yeah. to also be having this conversation but didn't. And I just wonder, is, was that a frustration or a thought yeah. for you at all? Yeah, that was really frustrating. To have a lot of private conversations with like people like not only in the athletics world but like just in like the public mm. that people would like know their name in their face mm. and like they just wouldn't say anything mm. do you know what i mean mm. like i don't know they were like yeah like thanks and it's like why don't you do something <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah um yeah so i think again it was frustrating to not have much like public support in like the athletics world and i like mm. that you mentioned the commentators too because like you know they could have definitely said that too mm. um but they just yeah chose not to um mm. and again i think it has a lot to do with cancel culture and you know a lot wanting to upset people and not wanting to hurt feelings um but yeah like people you know people seem to want to support women's sport but not when it comes to this issue mm. does that make sense mm. like yeah. it's yeah. it's so i think it's so frustrating that you know we want to be like, yeah, go lionesses mm, and mm. and all that, but like, well, what are you gonna do if you know mm. those if there's not rules in place and this happens? Like, mm. you know, are they gonna say anything or, um, and then like you have some celebrities like you know Megan Rapinoe, who's <laughs> like supporting, yeah, <laughs> um, trans people and women's sport, and it's you know, it. I just yeah, I wish I wish you know people would try not to. They, I wish they'd cared more about, you know, the actual women's sport mm. than not upsetting people. Mm. Does that, yeah? No, no, it does, like, and it, it does because it, it feels like that we're <laughs> we're trying to kind of just stronghold subcultures into areas which it kind of looks like it should fit, but it, it genuinely, like when we all look at it, yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. And again, there's no reflection or poor reflection on anyone who chooses to be transgender or goes through the transition of that due to things like gender dysmorphia. It's just, it it it's just, it just doesn't fit. And it's not to say that that person is wrong, they're weird or they're not human. Yeah, yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's just it's, unfortunately yeah. like, it's, that's it. And again, going back to what is it, it comes down to the biology of it, not what you believe you are to be or yeah. what you want to identify yeah, as. Yeah, exactly. Which is such a, a, a tricky con except I guess in some respects to put across to someone where maybe they're actually going through quite a bit of distress anyway you know yeah. with, with yeah, that yeah, you know, exactly. it's not unheard of for you know people the, the transgender community to be having difficulties around mental health yeah. anyway so there's so much going on for them at the time which you hate makes to this, like add another thing yeah, almost just and it's like no that's it. not my intent like yeah, yeah, that's yeah. genuinely not my yeah. intent like yeah. it's just purely like you say biology yeah it's a challenging one, but yeah, for sure. It's yeah. I, I, what I would like to say to you in terms of just reviewing the conversation stuff, they've been so well balanced, um, and well done to you for that. To be honest, because oh, <laughs> I, I appreciate the frustration of it, and I think your your example of using like the the lionesses with that, you know, what they're doing and they're fantastic. Anyway, yeah. amazing yeah. World Cup, the WSL's unreal, and it's like you know this this could challenge that slightly yeah and then exactly, a few years yeah. time when it does take over we'll all be wondering why but why? we all yeah. know why we just needed to put something in place and have hard conversations exactly. i think difficult conversations are hard for people to have at the moment uh, yeah, I agree. because of the cancel culture but yeah yeah it needs to happen somewhere like we i think we all need to sit in a room and be a bit pissed off and upset at each other first yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then move on after yeah let's hash it out like honestly yeah yeah let's let's move on to the future now we, okay. we you've you've had a <laughs> let's move away from this because i i guess what i don't want to do as well is your your career only be around this one stance you had because <laughs> you know yeah. as, as as amazing as it is it, we you know you're here as a shot putter it's a big year next year yeah or well whenever you guys see this because it might be march because we're currently interviewing in october <laughs> so paris is on its way how, how we how we how we feeling about that can i ask that question yet is it too soon is it um excited nervous yeah um like ready for the challenge mm. um i think it's more because i didn't get to to get to go to tokyo mm. despite qualifying that makes me that little bit nervous but yeah i feel like more determined than ever as well okay. because of that yeah you know is that is that something you'd be comfortable chatting about with yeah. the qualification yeah, yeah. yeah. Chat, chat, what 
chat to us what happened um so i qualified for tokyo mm -hmm. i think i was like 28th in the world maybe um and they just decided not to accept my invite um i was one of the i would think well i was actually the highest invite they didn't accept so they took people like much lower down in the rankings mm -hmm. than me um basically the selection policy you know says the next round um, my next round's a final all the runners get to do semis and whatever else okay. so um i definitely think that's just not fair just not mm -hmm. fair in terms of the selection policy and not not fair with who sits in that room and how they make decisions um because i literally was told on the phone mm -hmm. you are not some young up-and-coming thing those are the exact words that were said to me when i was told i wasn't going and at 28 years old as a shot putter you know i could i, I was like well i'm throwing for another 10 years so yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's bullshit yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so yeah that was really hard um but moving forward you know i think 2022 was a big year and i mm. i did everything yeah. <laughs> um so the olympics is the last one on my list world in, also i've done the world indoors i've done europeans come walls mm. world outdoors i just haven't done the olympics so yeah to have that response or that phone call and those words projected like that, I think a lot of people, and this this is a testament to just, I think, the sporting mentality, but to hear that in any kind of line of work that you might do or, you know, from a social perspective is quite damning. Yeah. What, as as an athlete, how or do, how do you ma manage that yourself? Because I, I can imagine there's a bit of a mentality that's like, right, I'm going to have to prove you wrong now. Like, yeah. just, just naturally, just like, right, okay, you said it, fine yeah that yeah. We, we've got to go to war with that now yeah yeah exactly um i definitely think i did that in 2022 mm -hmm. <laughs> um it was nice they actually decided to take the invites um you know i think to qualify for world indoors was a massive massive confidence boost for me mm -hmm. only 16 people go mm -hmm. you know that's a big deal um and i finished 13 i didn't even finish as low as i was ranked so mm -hmm. <laughs> um with not a lot of training either because i was really ill that winter i'm gonna have a good indoor one of these days guys <laughs> oh, this year's gonna be the year yes. put it out to the world good vibes um yeah so that was like major for me mm. um and then yeah because i i generally wasn't didn't think i was going to qualify for that one because obviously 16 people you know that's mm. that's a task that is mm. um but yeah i did it and you know then i did all three outdoors that was that was really great um but yeah i think you know the olympics is the last one that i haven't been to mm. and i think last year we made some mistakes in terms of training just in decisions and what we were focusing on but i think that's that's not the case this year not okay. not this winter training so i am definitely focused you know mm. it's it's fun to be getting married but at the same time i'm like yeah, back yeah. my mind you know yeah <laughs> yeah definitely in in throwing mode yeah how, it, so. how do you know you don't mind me asking this again you don't yeah. just go into what you don't do but you know yourself and steven because they're, they're, there's i guess steven's married to two people right you're married to <laughs> amelia the woman that you know and you love but you also then are married to amelia the you know the athlete and i'm sure there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into that for both of you to be fair and oh yeah not engaging in probably what be like a, just a, no a normal relationship for those that don't have one of their loved ones competing at such a level to which yeah. you do how you know is, is that something that you know throughout your relationship together you found the challenge because of the athlete amelia not oh, not because she's a horrible yeah. person <laughs> but you no, know no, in no, terms yeah. of Sorry, just the schedule it's just making and, me emotional a bit because yeah no 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 no, it's fine this is this is real life um you know i think he sacrifices a lot for me <laughs> and that doesn't go unnoticed like outside of training and outside of competitions and you know, yeah, I just you know appreciate him and love him to death for it. Um, but yeah, no, he definitely helps me, you know, be a better athlete. Mm. And that's like you know a dream come true for a partner. Hundred mm. percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, dream come true. So yeah, I definitely think you know he's had you know a few sessions where I probably cussed him out unnecessarily. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> you know yeah but like i could admit that after the fact <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um you know and it's you know not something i'm proud of and i'm always very sorry if i you know do you know lose it with him um 
but it's just I think part of my sport it's mm. really tough sometimes mm. like you know when you you can't feel the ball mm. you know I couldn't feel the shot last year mm. for my life I couldn't feel it like I don't know how else to describe it um I'm sure you don't quite understand what that means but like you just don't feel it mm. like you get into the ring and you're like well this could go 14 meters this could go 18 cool yeah. we don't know we don't know what we're gonna get today yeah, yeah, yeah. literally like almost every meet I went to that's what it felt like um and you know it is hard and he's definitely you know stuck with me through all the hard hard ups and downs and um you yeah, know it's definitely um a different relationship than i've been in previously mm. um to have someone so supportive you know mm. forgives you when you do cuss them out <laughs> you know <laughs> um you know because he knows it's mm. not him it's mm. the sport mm. like and i feel like we've had that discussion you know sometimes you have to have those hard discussions you know mm. I'm, i say to him i'm sorry like you know i told you to you know go after yourself today like I, yeah. that was me being frustrated at training i'm sorry yeah. you know but i think we've gotten to a place now where he like will understand that more mm. and like he'll he'll know what to say after a bad comp or he'll know not to say anything mm. <laughs> um but yeah no just um he's definitely <laughs> got two different people <laughs> in his life <laughs> yeah yeah Fantastic. like you say yeah, yeah the shot putter and then me outside yeah. like definitely <laughs> i definitely am a different person when yeah. i'm not at training or i'm not competing um you know but it's actually been amazing to like do all these things with him mm. like he's been there for when i won british champs mm. he's been there at like you know the diamond league when i beat a world mm. champion yeah. like do you know what i mean like mm. all the high highs and then like you know all the low lows mm. um but yeah it's it's been you know really amazing to have like someone like that by yeah. my side yeah no, for I sure it. I, I bet I, with that kind of thought that you mentioned as well we're not feeling the ball and again yeah. I, I guess you know i think people can read between the lines of that in terms yeah. of you know any sprinters that are listening you know when we're doing block sessions when it feels sluggish and you don't know why it's like what's going on like, i can't hit that like little sweet spot to to be going through that kind of form and period also without like kind of i guess financial backing from you know and not being on the on the funding does that add an added like slice of pressure at all is is that even in in the context of your mind and not just that you're not throwing what you want to and you know you're capable of but again from not being funded like it's almost like it's added pressure like i have but i have to perform in this because i've yeah. not got a nice like bit yeah. of monthly come through yeah no yeah for sure i think it's one of them where you're like i want to perform um and you know it would be nice to be on the funding but at the end of the day like i'm in a really really unique position where i don't have a contract i don't have you know anything like holding me down and um you know the individual who sponsors me you know is like just an amazing human being that mm. loves athletics mm, mm. and i think those are so hard to come by yeah, 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 100%. um 100%. and i know that the position i'm in is like like you know people would kill for this mm. you know so i'm i'm ultimately grateful every day and i think it's more like i want to perform for him mm. almost like mm. i want to win every league match to give my club max points like mm. that's just you know i want to make worlds you know just I want to go to Worlds mm. because, you know, that looks good for my club mm. and I'll attract more kids to the club so we can continue to be a really, really successful club because um, it's fun winning the league. It mm. just is. Yeah, 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 no, 100%. <laughs> um, we've got a great, a great team, a great setup, you know, mm. now that we're, you know, mixed, we're still, we're even still killing it. Like mm. it's, it's great to have the guys with us now. Mm. Um, definitely less us and them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I don't think I necessarily like think about that anymore in terms of like oh i need to perform to get on funding it's more mm. like i want to perform to show them what they should have what they should have done okay almost like yeah. you know um for the like you know it's they they pick and choose who they think has potential you know and you can argue mm. so many cases for everyone you know mm. um but yeah, no, it's more, I just want to, I just want to be, you know, the best I can be really, mm. um, in terms of like making my career, you know, as good as it can be. Cause mm. you know, I'm, I'm not done yet. Yeah. 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 How do you, have you always thrived with 
adding that sense of pressure to yourself in terms of I need to perform for X, Y, and Z. Because I know obviously you're not doing it for the external factors anymore. Yeah. You know, it sounds like that's changed and it's more for you. But again, like, you know, the way you put yourself forward for, you know, the things that we were talking about earlier in the session and things like that. Do you find that, has that been something you've come to learn or is it something that has just naturally always been within you? Because I guess from a competitive perspective, it's just you either like competition or it's just not for you. Yeah. There's something about a race day. I wake up and I feel like I've taken pre-workout all night on an IV and I haven't but I'm just on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I've only ever known that it's just been there. I've never had someone sit down with me and talk to me about the importance of competition and resistance and maybe not doing well, but keeping with something even though you're not doing great. Yeah. But what about for yourself? Has that that always been internally there for you or has that been like a learned behaviour? I definitely think it's been there. Um, And I think with age too, I've gotten better about not panicking if I don't feel ready for a meet um a comp whatever you want to call it um but no I definitely think it's always been there you know growing up I you know I I knew what comps were the big comps Mm. those were I don't know you just find another level of focus I guess beforehand and like that prep for the week is like no I'm gonna do everything Mm. everything I can to make this comp coming up like the best it can be to give myself the best chance to you know throw a pb um you know when whatever it is i need to do um yeah i just think it's i think it's always been there for me engage i just want to be competitive you know you want to be successful um even if it's not winning mm. you know a pb and a fifth place is nothing to be frowned upon mm. <laughs> you know sometimes that's that's how things fall mm. but you know you still did the best you could on the day mm. and that, i think that's important mm. I, I think what's been quite nice especially speaking to yourself and me and also probably another question involved in this as well in terms of you know going back to not having the funding and shows how much of like this is not just purely for financial kind of gain at all <laughs> again we said athletics got no <laughs> money not, in it at whatsoever not. either so what do you think in terms of when we're maybe not have that don't have the funding and still keeps you going because I can imagine that there probably has been people in the past within our sport and any sport really that are still competing to the level you are but consistently getting the knockbacks of you know the support whether it's from a governing body or something else and then just being like I can't do it without this is there anything particular for you that sets yourself different where you just keep going um I just think throwing is more about passion Mm. It's not necessarily for the money, like you mm. say, you know, I bet some, you know, some people just, you know, they won't retire, right? Because mm. they know they're going to get invited to every Diamond League that year. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I'm, you know, and that doesn't necessarily happen in the throws. Mm. Um, so I think it's, you know, throwing is definitely a passion. At one point when I first moved to the UK, mm. I was working two jobs probably 12 hours a day and still training. Mm. You know, and I still managed to scrape through and qualify for Worlds in 2019, even though it didn't take me. <laughs> um, <laughs> not salty or anything. No, 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 not at all. No, no, um, no, no. <laughs> but, like, you know, it's more about this is what I love doing. This is what I want to do with my life. Um, it's never been never been about the money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, like, happy with, like, 500 euros, mate. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? When you yeah, go to a yeah. meet, you're like, oh, I want 500 euros. Yeah, yeah. Okay um maybe can go on holiday later this year (laughs) like you know what i mean it's like never been about the money um it's definitely you know this is what i love to do Mm -hmm. um always have and you know probably always will so i'll probably won't retire till i'm about 70 so (laughs) it's fine it's fine (laughs) Amazing. Where, where does now again just from i guess like we've yes we've got the olympics coming up and everything else but is there anything moving forward that amelia wants to do or look forward to now outside the wedding obviously but you know just as 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 a as an individual because pa- once paris comes along and i think we've had i can't remember if i had a discussion with this one of my friends the other day but in terms of you get to that peak and it's it's there we've had it and then that some not for everyone but sometimes that shift of i get home and i've had the olympics and that's it and it's like now what because the, well, I guess from a sporting perspective, we're so focused on this thing this year and that thing next year. And then once we've hit it, 
have you do you, even with worlds and stuff have you ever had that period where you've gone and it's like that downtime at all like that fall off of bleh, <laughs> for what um, having worked so hard for yeah nine ten uh, months yeah. and yeah How, i mean i think i personally like struggle with like not training okay so like even when i'm on holiday yeah i'll catch myself thinking about training yeah and, like you need to just simmer down mm. um yeah i guess it's more of like yeah like that down you know mm. you just you almost need to like get up and get going again mm. um which i think 2022 was actually kind of fun for but also exhausting at the same time in mm. terms of like the up down up down up down mm. of the year um but yeah no i feel like it's it's always interesting to like reflect back as well and just you know see what see what could have been different as well um in like planning for the future as well because like i said i kind of want to do this forever mm, <laughs> um mm. so it's one of those things like what can we do to make it better you know moving forward mm. in such a technical event as well i think i think i've you know learned a lot but i definitely think in terms of putting it into practice i, I need i need more still yeah mm. i need more still so okay do you know what that that more do we know what it is um i just think you know in the past i've not been very good about making those technical changes immediately in my yeah. throw and not like fully understanding not necessarily the throw as a whole but like what those changes should feel like in the throw yeah. um and so like moving forward it's more like you know i just want to get those in motion in the mm. throw and really understand what I'm feeling every every single time. Mm. And I think that's I've been much better about it this winter. Kay. And it makes me excited for yeah. the year to come. No yeah. good. No, I'm glad to hear. What does mentally not knowing though feel like for you? Because again, some people might argue it's generalized anxiety, right? In terms of just yeah, not knowing. Yeah, yeah. But particularly from a sporting perspective, when it's about performance, when we're doing this to dominate and beat people that we're gonna compete against. And then being in a space of, I don't know, what's that like? Like, do you mean in terms of my, my past year? D like just not, just yeah. in, you know, during those times where you are feeling like, I, I don't know in terms of what we need to do to make this click. Yeah, or with a technical yeah. thing of, we're doing something, but it doesn't even give a response physically to know where things need to change yeah. by the dial. So when we're in that kind of space of completely blind and we're just trying to scam around for this new feeling to make everything click yeah what's that process um, and period like for you i mean definitely stressful <laughs> <laughs> um but i also think i've got again as you get older i think you get better at you know understanding it's not the end of the world to like just take a step back and mm. really try and like learn what you're doing and figure it out um i think especially with last year i really tried to just like find a positive like, you know, if I did any one thing right that day, mm. I was like, we need to just roll with it. Like, mm. you know, mm. we need to just accept that, you know, we at least did that today. Mm. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's just this, it's about having that drive, I guess, you know, internally just to really want it. Mm. And I don't know. I just, I really want it, you know? Mm. And does it really want in it? Does that still do you experience days where there's no motivation, even though you want it? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so sometimes. Um, but like more, very, very rarely. Okay. So like it's, you know, sometimes you wake up and you just, you're just like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm gonna do it today. Mm. I just, I don't know. Um, especially when you're injured, it's easy to feel like that. You're mm. like, I don't like uh, during COVID. I don't I didn't know what I was doing with myself I mm. was just I, I don't want to do it today what am I training for um mm. I think I definitely love competing mm. so I think in my mind I'm like I'm getting ready to compete mm. and when I if I'm not getting ready to compete that's where it's easy to slip into these like oh no what am I you know I oh mm. I don't want to do it today um but I feel like COVID was <laughs> just a whole different mm. <laughs> oh my gosh thing um and moving like into the present it's it, that i learned a lot from that for mm. sure and it's definitely been a lesson in 
keep going whether you feel like it or not mm. um it's about that discipline you know i say that to myself probably on the daily when i'm throwing yeah have that discipline mm. like in the technique is what i'm referring to mm. but yeah it's about having that discipline yeah whether you feel like it or not <laughs> uh, yeah so I was, I was gonna say is that when you are having those days of maybe can't be bothered don't know why we're doing this does is the behavior still just turning up to the circle anyway or does it most change? of the time yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i'd say 99.9 .9 percent of the time yeah, yes yeah. <laughs> for <Okay>. sure <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. um no amelia thank you for today this has been great i've been waiting for a lot of so we've been keeping up for a while the last couple of months so i'm <laughs> glad we finally plugged it in and sat down but no thank you so much for sitting with me and chatting about this because it's been um it's been to watch you on the sidelines with everything you have been going through you know from a competitive perspective and also the stance you've taken with you know a contentious topic in the world at the moment as well um which again is not fueled by being a massive transphobe it's just you know th yeah. just the sensibility of being fair no. um which means some people do maybe get a short end of the stick temporarily but yeah. we'll get there eventually i'm sure i hope yeah i hope so, we yeah. Will, I hope yeah as we said you know it's not about banning them it's just we need no to, yeah we want people in sport. yeah we, want you here. <laughs> we need you <laughs> yeah and not even from that greedy financial perspective it's just a great sport to be a part of yeah yeah it but really is it just needs to be done correctly that's that's all yeah which yeah so no thank you so much no, Appreciate yeah, it thanks on. for having thank me you. boom